My name is Adibola. I'm 15 years old. My dad is a pastor. My mom is a medical doctor. She's a gynecologist profession. They have three kids, and I'm the second born. I brought about the major idea of the urine power generator. My major inspiration was when I saw on the net that a family of five died from carbon monoxide poisoning. That was what majorly inspired me. In today's world, electrical energy is as important to humans as the air we breathe. In Nigeria, electricity is not only epileptic but unpredictable. Many depend on power generating sets to meet electrical needs daily. Unfortunately, these machines release poisonous gases into the atmosphere, resulting in deaths of scores of people. This worries Adebola Duruaino, a 15-year-old Nigerian high school student. She attempted to solve this problem, but she couldn't do it alone. She decided to discuss her idea with her friends. The idea is simple. The idea was to produce, make a generator that won't release, give off carbon monoxide that is poisonous to the environment. She thought of the possibilities of developing a power generator that will run on water. After some research, Adebola and her friends met their teacher. We looked at water. We said, well, one thing we also taught them in chemistry is that there is an hydrogen bonding that holds the molecules of water together stronger. So it will be a bit difficult to break away the hydrogen from the oxygen to which it is bonded. So I said to them that water will be a little bit of a challenge. The team never gave up. After several brainstorming sessions, Adebola came up with another solution. This time, she considered salt as an alternative to petrol. They came up again with an idea of, okay, what about salt solution? I said, if you are trying to break salt solution, the tendency is there also that you will release chlorine gas, which is poisonous. In spite of this, the team remained resolute. Their focus was sharp and their zeal was unwavering. Recently, they had a class on urinalysis, the analysis of urine by physical, chemical and microscopic means to test for the presence of diseases, drugs and many others. Just then, this determined teenager considered generating fuel from urine by breaking down its water molecules to get hydrogen gas, which is a powerful source of energy. Water, once electrolyzed, will give off hydrogen oxygen gas. So we realize that once this hydrogen oxygen gas powers generator, our ex exhaust gas will be water vapor, and that's not poisonous to the environment. At first, her urine idea sounded ridiculous. I won't lie, I laughed in my mind. I was like, is this possible? Urine, the generator, does it work? It's a very ridiculous idea. But we're in the JET team, that's junior engineer, technicians, and scientists team. So we are encouraged to bring up ideas. So we didn't put it down, we didn't let her down. So we just came together and then we grew up on this idea. Being in their class, we've done the topic electrolysis. So I think during the course of that subject, we were able to know that we can generate a gas. So one of them came up with the idea that if hydrogen gas can be used to run jet engines, that hydrogen can also be used to power our appliances, for example, the generator. So when they came to me, I said, well, it is possible because we have taught them that. So that was where it all started from. How do we generate electricity using something that looked more or less like a waste? Adebola convinced her friends to believe it is possible. It's urine. It's abstract. It's ridiculous. So we're trying to convince people to make it work. We're trying to convince ourselves that it's going to work. So that was our major challenge, convincing ourselves.
After convincing themselves, the teenagers decided to share their idea of pure engineering ingenuity with their family members and friends. We didn't believe her. We kept, the father and I kept pushing her aside that, Biola, this thing cannot work. But she kept saying, mommy, it can work. But we didn't believe her, we just put her aside. The siblings too, nobody took her seriously in the house. When they came to me with their ideas, that's Debola and the rest, I asked some doubt that, is it working with robots? So let us see how far we can go. So we began our research. First of all, how can we make the urine to work inside the battery? And then how to store the gas? And then make the gen to work with the gas? Rather than being discouraged, Adebola and her team swung into action, visiting their school library every afternoon and surfing the internet to learn the possibilities for their idea. Sooner than they thought, they found a lead way and met their chemistry teacher for guidance. We researched online for possible materials we could use, but we noticed that some of them were at high prices. So we wanted something cheap, something that everyone could uh, afford. They developed a design. At this point, they were sure they could create a system that uses urine to produce fuel, thus inventing a generator that runs on hydrogen gas. The gas is being produced through the electrolysis of urine from our electrolytic cell. Once the urine is given off, it passes through a water bubbler. The function of the water bubbler here is to purify the gas. Any other gas or impurity that might have come in through the gas is purified by the water bubbler. Then it's stored in an empty gas storage tank. That's just to store it temporarily until you need it. So you might not even connect your electrolytic cell and you'll be powering your generator. So after it's been stored, it goes in through the borax. Borax here serves as a drying agent for the gas so that we don't want a lot of moisture going into the engine of our generator so it doesn't get spoiled. Then the gas goes into the generator. But now we're powering the generator using hydrogen gas. And hydrogen gas is more, it combusts faster than normal carbon-based fuels. That's our normal fuel-based generators. So we have to retard the top dead ignition of the generator by 11 degrees to enable it to work on hydrogen gas. Each of these whiz keys assign different roles to themselves in the process. I contributed in any other way, construction of the electrolytic cell, the components of generator, and the configuration of generator. Urine has to be electrolyzed, so we needed something to electrolyze the urine. So we just went to a refuse dump, and then we got the battery casing. It's just a normal car battery cell. So we just removed the contents from the car battery, and then we poured in our urine. I was the one that went to the market to get the materials in there for the project, after we had researched. Mine is to guide them in their research. You know, there are always errors of errors in research. So they avoid them going to error or trying something that is dangerous to their health. So I just guide them in their work. Their idea has been designed and it's time to test their solution. Their classmates volunteer their urine, all waiting for results. Your challenge was making it work. The first cell we did exploded because there was a backfiring. The team remained focused and we are convinced their solution will work. Determination was our keyword. So like we're determined, like focused that oh we have to do this, you know, we have to solve this problem. Hydrogen is being produced, but it's flowing back. So what do we do that eventually exploded our cell? Every member of the team went back to study. They dug up old science articles and journals, learning how to solve their gravest challenge. We actually thought of the fact that if we insert one-way valves into the hoses, like they won't backfire, like the gases won't backfire. At last, there came a breakthrough. This generator does not produce carbon monoxide, it produces water vapor. It's, it's very environment friendly. My dream is being fulfilled. Nigeria is safe, Africa is safe as it, safe as it will. 
They invented a system that uses urine to produce fuel. This is just a normal car battery cell. We just removed the contents and then inserted our electrodes. We used to print stainless steel mesh as our electrode, both at the cathode and at the anode. So that's just the electrode itself and battery case. Yeah, we have water in it. Okay. The water serves as a filter. So in case, once the urine, um, urine is electrolyzed and hydrogen oxygen gas is diverted, in case any other impurity vibrates with it, the water helps to remove it. Then from there, the purified gas moves into the storage container. So once once we just we don't once the gas is stored here, we don't even need the electrolytic cell. Because once you just start the generator, the gas from here will power it. Then the gas moves from here into the borax solution. The borax solution helps to remove moistness from the gas that's already passed through water. Because um, if there's moistness, if moistness enters the generator, it can spoil the engine of the generator. Then from there, it moves inside the with a liter of urine, this generator can run for six hours. Indeed, these kids have solved a problem. Initially, I was like, what, what are they bringing? Will this thing actually work? And to my surprise, it actually worked. I'm surprised to see a generator that is powered by urine. Output is just the same from the generator, so their output is not affected by the urine. Their invention has attracted both foreign and local media. Some critics fault their invention, saying it would take more energy to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen atoms than the resultant hydrogen fuel that is produced by the system. Yes, it's a point because you see, like all scientific innovations, there's always a place of improving on where you started from. The truth is that these students started, how do we generate hydrogen to power our gen? Now, after we've done this, of course, people, others, and other people in the jet club, physicists and uh, other aspects of, this, of, the, of engineering came in and said, okay, how do we measure the amount of energy we are giving out. I mean, we are giving to the gen and what is eventually bringing out. So we are working at that. It's also an aspect we are looking at. It's part of the next stage. We want to now come into measurement of what exactly is the amount of energy being, I mean, we are getting from the urine as against what the generator is eventually bringing out. In 2012, the team won the Nigerian edition of Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. Their success qualified them to compete with other young inventors from around the globe in the United States in 2013. They were also nominated to compete with other bright minds in the 2013 International Sustainable World Engineering, Environment, Energy and Project Olympiad. It is an invention to the extent that it, it's, a, it's a novel idea. It's a novel idea. We have gone around, we have gone to the net, and we've not seen where people have been able to generate hydrogen, which is the in thing now. Hydrogen in the world now is trying to replace our conventional fuel because of its purity, because of its harmlessness. So for the children to have been able to bring out urine from, sorry, to bring out hydrogen from urine, it is an invention. Nigeria, Adebola Dorina. Briefly after their return from the United States of America, the young inventors share their success stories. We got comments from the participants and the judges. 
when people saw our project, they were like, is, they were astonished that is it actually really possible for us to electrolyze urine to produce hydrogen gas to power a generator. And if we can use hydrogen gas to power a generator, that means since all engines are based on the same concepts, that means we can actually use hydrogen gas to power other machines. And they were really fascinated. The generator recently took us to the United States of America to represent Nigeria at the high sweep competition, which took place at Houston, Texas. That is the International Sustainable World Energy Engineering Project Olympiad. The, the function of this organization is mainly to prom promote young scientists in the engineering field, energy field, and environmental field. So pro projects in these categories are being awarded from all over the U.S. and all over the world. We won three gold medals under the category of energy. And for this category, we had over 1,000 participants from all over the world. And then for the Intel ISTEF, we won an award for the United Technologies under the category of energy and transportation. And there were also so many participants from all over the world. Apart from the medals we got, we also got um, scholarship from North American College. For gold medals, we have $11,000 scholarship per year once we go to their college to study. So they give you, you can apply for this scholarship since it's already ours. So once you apply for the scholarship, you can go on to the school. And it's always easier for international students because the university is an international friendly university. So it's a good achievement for us as a group. And we also had an award from, not a, from United Technologies. United Technologies gave us $3,000 in stock, but we can also change it to cash. They also are going to help us in further research of our projects because they are interested in our, the abstract of our projects. These four high school girls represent a generation of Africans that is poised to solving African problems. So my major inspiration is solving a problem, and once the problem is solved, I'm not thinking of going into just to solve that problem. That's my major drive. I'm working on making the generator like more portable than it is now. Like put all the parts in the compartment so that like, it will be easier for people to carry it around. I see Nigeria go to a place where cars work on urine, where we can develop our own engines and our engines work on urine, where urine is a major source of fuel, where our urine becomes expensive, where you can use urine to power different things. That's my major dream. Hygiene gas from urine, yes. I call them the Fantastic Four. For, for students, for you to have taught them an aspect of chemistry and they are able to apply it to, as we are praying, to be able to help the human race and remove the place of our environment being polluted, I feel very great and I'm proud of these students. Very, very fulfilled as a teacher. There's no limitation to knowledge and no limitation to study. Once you're a female and you're a male, you can do the same thing a male can do. There's no difference. It's just your mentality that's all that affects whatever you can achieve in life. A generation of solution providers is fast emerging on the continent. The African child is very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. Giving a conducive environment to work with. I have never been part of people that believe that our children are second class or can be. They are, they are as intelligent as any child anywhere. Well, these days, young Africans have developed various initiatives to make the country, the world as a whole better. Therefore, we have to encourage them. We are not to discourage them. We are to give them the maximum support so that they can bring out the best in them. If we think it is not possible, they believe it is possible. Welcome Africa to the age of redefinition. Other people are inventing many things. Challenge yourself to invent more. So don't let circumstances determine what you can achieve. Strive and work harder, and then you get to where your dream. <laughs>